Amnesty International got interested in Troy Davis's case because the more we learned about it, the more we realized how much it encapsulates so much of what is wrong and broken with the U.S. death penalty system. This is about the death penalty and this is about Troy Davis. Troy Davis's case reaffirms my belief uh, that we ought not to have the death penalty. The Troy Davis case has garnered so much attention all the way around the world because of this question of innocence. The question of innocence, I think, really magnifies some of the root moral issues of the death penalty. There is no person that could support the idea of somebody being executed who didn't actually commit a crime for which that person has been convicted. I'm here uh, for Troy Davis, who faces execution soon. The original victims in the Troy Davis case is Officer Mark Allen McPhail. His human right to life was violated. Justice must be served in his case, but taking another human life, particularly under these circumstances, really only creates a further injustice. This case has really called people's attention the fact that the United States criminal justice system has some serious problems, systemic issues of injustice. What people are already thinking about the system is that we don't, the system doesn't care. It doesn't care whether you're innocent or not. It certainly doesn't care if you're poor. <laughs> it really doesn't care if you're black or Hispanic. We know from our work in Amnesty that poor people and ethnic minorities uh, are more likely to face the death penalty than anybody else. It seems more than a likelihood and really a certainty that this country has put to death innocent people. The statistics really are quite overwhelming about the problems with the application of the death penalty system. Um, this is a system that is riddled with bias and error. The death penalty presents a false promise in the idea that one person's life can be repaid with another person's life. Uh, really what you end up with is a deepening of the cycle of violence. It pits two innocent families against each other, the family of the person on death row and the family of the crime victim. And both go through tremendous suffering in the process of the death penalty. The death penalty in the United States is not just a human rights violation, it has failed public policy. It fails to deter crime. In study after study, that has been proven and it is an enormous waste of resources. It costs far more to support the death penalty than it does other alternatives, including life without parole. The death penalty diverts important attention and needed resources to real solutions, uh, to preventing violent crime, to dealing with the aftermath of violent crime, including tending to the needs of murder victims' families and badly needed resources with local law enforcement. Many years ago when we started this campaign, the death penalty was being used in many countries around the world. We are winning this campaign. We will think that the progress is too slow. The progress is too slow, but we will continue our efforts until we see that day with a world that is free uh, of the death penalty. No matter if that is done at the hands of someone who commits murder or at the hands of the state who is doing it under the auspices of legally sanctioned killing. The taking of human life uh, is a human rights violation. What do we want? Abolition. What do we want? Abolition.